Our next guest is no stranger to the South by Southwest EDU. He's the founder of Hip Hop Ed and a New York Times best-selling author. He's back at the conference with two STEM books, STEM, STEAM, Make, Dream, reimagining the culture of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And, I love this title, Ratchetemic, reimagining academic success. Please welcome Chris Emden to the South by Southwest EDU studio. Hello. Hello. I'm so glad to be here. And you're looking amazing. This Thank is you a very really much. good suit. I appreciate it. So, welcome back to South by Southwest EDU. I mean, you are definitely a longtime favorite of the conference, also a pioneer of hip hop education. And last time you gave a keynote speech several years ago, mm -hmm. um, it was detailing how the traditional education systems often alienate kids who don't and don't allow us to see their brilliance. Yeah. Can you? Explain the disconnect. Yeah. What's happening out there? Well, you know, I my work is about shifting the orientation that we have um, towards forms of genius that are not traditionally accepted by institutions. And it's really about recognizing their forms of intelligence, their forms of, of critical thinking, their forms of engagement in the world that are oftentimes not given spaces in schools and universities and conferences that we need to be able to interrogate to make sense of the ways that they offer a perspective that those of us who are trained in the more academic traditions don't have. Um, and so it's not, it's, not, it's not about sitting with saying what we've done wrong. I think we've done that for a very long time. There are a lot of things that education does wrong. I, I really want us to shift towards a lens of possibility. Um, what is the magic that happens in hip hop ciphers? When young folks gather and position themselves in circles and, and, and communicate through head nods and may not know everybody's rhymes, but at the end of that 15 minute session, they know everything about an, another person. You know, what is it about that structure that we can bring into institutions? You know, what is it about the ways that b-boys dance or the ways that um, young black women have this magic that they express when they're doing double dutch? What, what wisdom can we glean from that and bring into traditional spaces to help traditional spaces be more welcome for those populations. So at the end of the day, it's about, it's about reimagining what genius is, reimagining what intelligence is, and going to the places that we've said historically don't have it, and being able to identify the magic in those spaces. So what's the benefit of using hip hop to teach kids? Well, hip hop is the chief exemplar for anything magical that should happen in education. Uh, you know, you learn how to be able to have a command over an audience. Uh, from watching a hip-hop artist perform on stage. If a teacher studied how KRS-One rocks out of the performance, they are much more effective in the classroom. Um, how do you learn the power of music in the backdrop to be able to help folks concentrate better? That's hip-hop. How, how do we learn to be cutting edge of technology? The way that hip-hop is consistently learning how to be able to use new plugins and new devices and new, new avenues for production. How do the, the first people who innovate any social media space is hip-hop artists? How do hip-hop artists learn how to be able to communicate? So the argument I make is, if you study hip-hop, mm -hmm. if you deconstruct the essence of the culture, mm -hmm. you find ways to improve education. And if education is not gleaning wisdom from hip-hop, now all you're going to do is just keep on replicating the same old existing practices that do violence in populations who are looking to engage academically and intellectually and, and in education. So um, hip hop is the answer, uh, is, my, is, 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 um, you know, is my mantra. If you look there, you'll find the answers to a lot that plagues society. Uh, from what I understand, it is the number one growing music in the world. Absolutely. So if you're looking for re relatability, I imagine hip hop has a lot of benefits. You know, not only is it um, a, a great artifact for relatability, it's also a great artifact for mental health, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, my, my, my session that I'm gonna be sharing later on this afternoon, you know, talks about the ways that hip hop helps to heal. You know, if, and, and you can critique, you know, problematic lyrics and say, well, that was really violent or that was really misogynistic and we should hold those rappers accountable for, for misogyny and violence. At the same time, a lot of folks are, are going through therapy on a hip hop song. So there's not things that they're actually gonna do in person in real life. It's a way of sort of venting, a, a way to respond to the aggression that the world gives you, you know, in song. And so if we, if we move past the surface layer of like, let's just decode those lyrics <laughs> and see how we can indict them for a crime through what they said in their raps and say, why are they sharing what they're sharing? What stories are they really sharing? How can we use the stories that are being shared here as exemplars for young people to not do that, right? Um, the, the extent to which hip hop has the power to transform education is really tied to the extent to which the system of education opens up their thinking 
to be able to look beyond the traditions that they've done historically. I like the energy of it. I love that. Yeah. So what have been the results in schools so far that have adopted the hip hop approach? Any particular success stories that I you're mean, most I, proud of? I've done a project called Science Genius where I had young people write raps about science content. Um, and you know we've had ninth graders memorize and explain and decode a semester long physics course in one song. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're showcasing new ways to be able to, to, um, to distribute your, your, your academic knowledge. Uh, the kids who are part of Science Genius show up to school more often. Uh, their, their attendance rates are increased, their graduation rates are increased, uh, their uh, willingness to stay in college increases because they find like they're actually smart. You know, the world's who they weren't their whole entire lives. And then most importantly, like we've asked like, like data points and results, it's just more fun. <laughs> you know, you go into a classroom and you're utilizing hip hop or you go into a school that uses a hip hop ontology or philosophy, uh, you know, young folks are excited to be there, they're joyous. Uh, they're celebrating, they're dancing, and there's a lot of research that tells us that where joy is present, learning is present. And hip-hop becomes the conduit through which we create spaces of joy. So is joy your definition of success? What's your, sex, your, your definition? No, my definition of success varies. I, th mm -hmm. I think a lot of folks would like for me to say it's just joy, right? Because then they can make the argument that, well, there are no academic successes. I think <laughs> it's a multiplicity of things. I want young folks to be happy. Um, I also want them to get higher test scores. I want them to be able to enjoy the musicality of the culture, and I also want the classes to be academically and intellectually rigorous. Um, you know, I think that people construct these binaries, like it's either fun or it's boring, or you know, they're either learning or they're bored. And I, I think those are age-old, antiquated ideas about education. Um, it can be intellectually rigorous, um, it could have you know, high uh, expectations for young folks, and it can concurrently be fun and dope and exciting and celebratory. And uh, you know, I, I come from a, a school of thought where you could do all those things at the same damn time in the words of a uh, social critic and culture analyst, Two Chains. <laughs> okay, that leads me to your new book. Yes. Ratchetemic, Ratchetemic. Reimagining Academic Success. Yes. First explain the term ratchetemic, which man, I love, I've never heard that word. You yeah. must have invented it. It's so Yes, good. I so did. So good. I did. It should be part of the lexicon. Somebody it call up, uh, call up uh, Webster and uh, Dear uh, Urban Dictionary, yes. Dear Webster, all of them. Yes, Ratchetemic. And you know, it's so funny when people say, "Did you invent Ratchetemic?" I, you know, I, I don't think I did. I think that the young people I engage with did. You know, you know, I have a young folks that are like, "Yo, Doctor, you know, I'm mad Ratchet, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I know you're Ratchet. You know, you're a little <laughs> extra. You know, you bring a lot of energy." Um, but let me see your report card grades with Doctor E. You know. We've been working on Science Genius, like my, 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 my GPA is a 4.0 right now. And the idea that a young person can be themselves, right? Um, like me, like I'm, I'm myself, right? I'm a little loud, you know, I'm a little extra. You know, I bring a lot of energy to spaces. I'm all, I also have a PhD. I also have worked at the top institutions in the, in, in, you know, in the world. And so, but I could do those things at the same time. And I stumbled into that, right? I accidentally became, you know, an endowed chair in curriculum theory from the Bronx. And I want, that, I want my accidental success to be intentional for the next generation, right? I want an eighth grader to know that they can be themselves and smart at the same time. So ratchetemic is equal parts ratchet and academic. Ratchet is low brow, a little bit too much, a little too extra, colorful clothing, you know, you know, you might pull up to the South by Southwest studio in a matching maroon suit with striped socks and a fresh pair of kicks. You know, that's a little ratchet. But at the same time, we're holding a conversation that has value for folks who care about education. Um, and, and it's rigorous and it's thoughtful. And so Ratchetemic is about how do we find ways to create schools where young people can be Ratchetemic. And it also is about how have we created schools that rob young people of the opportunity to be their authentic selves in classrooms? And how can we help all people to find their authentic selves as they partner up with their academic selves? And, and this is not a black thing, it's not an urban thing, it's not a hip hop thing. You know, there's suburban Ratchet, there's hood Ratchet, there's, <laughs> you know, there's academic Ratchet. It's about authenticity. And I make the argument that if we lead our engagement with young people, with authentic selves, their likelihood of finding connection with us increases exponentially. And so Ratchetemic lays out the framework, uh, describes ways to create a Ratchetemic space, gives us a historical perspective on why we've adopted a, a, a non-Ratchetemic approach, and then offers up possibilities for 
a ratchetemic approach to teaching and learning going forward. So what's a ratchetemic classroom look like? Oh man, ratchetemic classroom looks like a, a collider classroom. So I, I, I partnered up with Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts in New York City, mm -hmm. and we have these seven classrooms called collider classrooms. And they are classrooms that merge the best research in psychology, in music, in art, and in pedagogy. And so we actually know what ratchetemic classrooms look like. They look like really cool and funky lighting, green spaces in the classroom, multiple screens pouring in words of encouragement and upliftment into young people, uh, a stage in the front of the class that is not just for the teacher but also for the students because teaching actually is the ultimate performing and performance art. Um, and if anybody's interested in seeing what these classrooms look like, hit me up and we could, we could, we could show you a tour of Collider Classrooms. We have seven of them being built right now in New York City. Where do they hit you up? Uh, hit me up on my Twitter or my Instagram. So I'm at Chris Emden, mm -hmm. C-H-R-I-S-E-M-D-I-N. Um, I respond to all inquiries or thoughts or questions. Unless, you, um, unless you're a trash human being and are, are uh, you know, because people sometimes take the liberties to utilize social media spaces to share their um, antiquated perspectives about None education. of this audience. You don't got to worry yeah, yeah, about yeah. that. If you, this if is you, the EDU If you want to know audience. suckers, like, keep your ideas to yourself. But the EDU audience? No. Holla at your boy. Let's talk yes. that far. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so what does the ratchetemic approach look like that's different from traditional classrooms across the country? Well, you know, traditional classrooms, I, I wouldn't say tra traditional classrooms have poor intentions. I don't think the execution of a transgressive pedagogy doesn't happen in traditional classrooms. So, so I'm, I, I argue for a rethinking of the entire thing, right? There's no reason why young folks should be still sitting in classrooms in rows or groups of four mm -hmm. where they're not interacting with the teacher, the environment, and the space. There's no reason why we're not incorporating technology in really transgressive ways, especially given that young folks have used technology all throughout the pandemic. Now we have a post-pandemic education that's literally about just being in person and not utilizing all these tools. So a rationademic approach is transgressive. Mm -hmm. It says, what's working? Let's keep that or refine that. But it's also really intentional about saying, you know what, that doesn't work. And, and why are we holding on to that just because of tradition? And if it's not working, throw it out. Mm -hmm. And how can we incorporate new ideas, new more ratchet ideas, new mm -hmm. more organically created? Like ratchet is also about being like organically created in community almost in the moment, right? Like young folks are so expressive and they're so inventive and they're so creative. You know, what can we glean from their wisdom that they're creating in the moment? And how are we incorporating those things into classrooms? We're keeping high expectations. We keep a high rigor, yeah. But, but we're being nimble with everything else. So, ratchetemic can be used in any classroom, from Absolutely. the south to the north to the east. Urban, suburban, rural. I've witnessed the most powerful ratchetemic classrooms in Appalachia, mm -hmm. where historically, what's going on in the community is not part of what's going on in the classroom. And we're like, you know what? How about we teach this math lesson the way these young folks engage on the farm? Um, in the ways that they communicate with each other. So it's really about authenticity and it's about embracing where young folks are in that rawness mm -hmm. and then being nimble. I, I, you know, I make the argument that nimbleness is the, chief, is the chief attribute for any effective educator. Like, you know, you, you've got to have the lesson plan and then be willing to toss the lesson plan out the window. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You've got to, you've got to um, have to, the, the whole curriculum done up and then the young folks take you somewhere and you have to be like, you know what? I'm leaving that. I'm going where they go. And I think that Schools of education oftentimes train teachers to be very um, institutional, and a rationademic approach is necessarily intuitional. It's a little goodwill hunting. Stand on your desk, throw your books. It is. <laughs> and here's the thing I, I love that you said that, right? Because when we witnessed that in goodwill hunting, what did we say? Wow, that's so cool. Could you imagine if classes were like that? Where you could just write on, like, we, we look at, we witness those exemplars, and we're like, that's amazing. If only we could. And the answer is you can, right? This is, this is not just an idea of a classroom that should be on a movie set. This should be an idea of a classroom that we bring to real life every day for children. Um, and, 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 you know, that, that's what I argue for. So your panel discussion here at South by Southwest EDU centers on a new direction to healing education. Can you talk about where we're hurting the most and how we can best heal? Man, I can't, even, I can't tell you where we're hurting the most because we're, we're, we're it's like, it's like triage, fam. Like, you know, it's, you know, there's structural issues as far as like, um, you know, who holds power within institutions of education? Like, who do we hire? Who are these fools on school boards across the country that have never been in a classroom but are making decisions for classrooms and are affecting the way we teach? Like, that's a problem. Then we've got folks who are getting hired into teaching who don't care about young people. 
Then we've got young folks who just went through a pandemic and we've just ignored that they went through a pandemic and we're trying to go back to normal. And we've got curriculum that's flawed and we've got standards that don't reflect the humanity. So there's, there's a lot of brokenness at the same time, mm -hmm. right? It's important, to, it's important for us to do this at the same time. At the same time as we have a lot of brokenness, we have so much hope and possibility. And so we, we're at this like crossroads, right? where we have to recognize what's broken in order to be able to be really clear about how to go forward. Yes. Our panel this afternoon really like leans in on that. I've got, man, I got the, the dopest folks in the country. You know, I got Dr. Napoleon Wells, a psychologist at the VA to talk to us about like trauma and the trauma that military veterans undergo and the ways that we can glean wisdom from a trauma expert who works with folks who've undergone that kind of trauma. Mm -hmm. For the classroom, I got Angel Jones, one of the top higher education scholars in the country. I got Dina Simmons, one of the top SEL educators in the country. So like, I, like, South by Southwest is home. So like, if I'm coming back home after a couple years, I'm bringing a squad with me. Yes. So <laughs> Dr. Simmons, Dr. Wells, um, and, uh, and Dr. Jones, we, we're gonna talk about, about healing. And we're going to talk about where we're broken, and then we're going to talk about the avenues forward. I like somebody who isn't just identifying problems, but presenting solutions. It makes no too many people in education make a lot of money telling you what's wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and we love to engage with those folks because it's important on some level to find out what's wrong, or you kind of find you, this is, there's a camaraderie and sorrow. Yeah, misery right? loves company. Misery loves yeah. company. You know, the, the last quote in my, in my in, for white folks who teach in the hood, um, it is that teachers, misery loves company, but so does dysfunction. You know, all uh, those folks, they like to hang yeah, out with each other. A whole bunch yeah. of suckers just talking about how everything is broken. Um, and I, you know, I just don't believe in that. There's possibility, there's opportunity. Um, coming out of the pandemic, there's so much we can glean from. The young folks have shown us during the pandemic. So much so learning much to hope. do. So, so much, much hope. So I'm going to be one of them cats that's going to tell you that that's trash, but it's how we're going to fix it. Yes. And, um, and, and we're going to talk about that in my session this afternoon. That's articulated in the books. Um, and wherever I go, like you're going, you, I'm going to theorize with you. I'm going to give you some philosophy. Yep. And then I'm going to give you some practical, tangible, implementable things to be able to change this thing. Well, you're also here for Big Picture Learning's uh, Leadership Journeys event tomorrow night. Can you tell me about that? That's, that's actually tonight. And um, <laughs> yeah. listen, <laughs> Big Picture Learning is one of my favorite organizations. We talked about brokenness and we talked about possibility. It's one of those orgs that is about possibility. They've created schools all across the country. Um, that really have a novel, new approach to teaching and learning. And tonight, we're going to turn up. And um, let me define turn up for those who may not be privy. <laughs> uh, the turn up is a moment and space and time where we elevate, turn up our collective consciousness in celebration, in joy, in excitement, and in learning. And so that, that event tonight, we're going to be listening to music, we're going to be telling our personal stories, and then we're going to radically dream about new possibilities for education. You turn up here already. Yes. <laughs> we love the advice your mom gave you. Little drops of water make a mighty ocean. Yes. Incredible. Where are you putting your drops these days? Yeah. And where should we all be putting our drops? Oh, man. Oh, Mama Emden. My mama is the truth. Uh, probably one of the, one of the first organic intellectuals I ever encountered was my mom. She, had this really br she has this really brilliant way of being able to look at a phenomenon and then capture the pure essence of it, mm -hmm. and then offer you the essence of it so you can find a way to fix it. Um, but my drops of water are everywhere. I am building classrooms, like literally building classrooms, like putting on a hard hat and breaking down walls and rebuilding classrooms. You're straight going, uh, like you construct listen, it yourself. I'm trying to pitch a TV show if anybody wants to come work with us to reimagine classrooms. So I'm, I'm, my, my drops of water are in redesigning classrooms. They're also in training teachers. Uh, I train teachers all across the country. I have an organization, Hip Hop Ed, that has a consortium of, of, of scholars and thinkers and, um, and teachers who go to schools and help to sort of reimagine classrooms. Um, I'm dropping waters at my position at the University of Southern California, uh, where we are just radicalizing the idea of what teacher education could look like. Um, I work to create a new STEAM and Dream Center. Mm -hmm. So I, my drops of water are being placed in spaces that speak to my passion. This, this is the one part. You're going to love this. At least I hope you love it. My drops of water are only being put down in spaces that fulfill me. Uh, I'm not doing anything that my heart doesn't jump for. And um, I've always been a design person. I love aesthetics, so I'm designing classrooms. I love teachers and teaching, so I train teachers. I love reimagining teacher education, so I work in that en endeavor. And I don't do anything but that. 
Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's so interesting, you know, I, people call me all the time for the, my perspective on a bunch of different things. Like, you know, Dr. Dunn, what do you think about the, you know, the political whatever with, you know, Biden and, 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 and I'm like, yo, I can offer some commentary on those things, but I'm not giving those things my energy. My energy belongs to transforming education. And, and that's where my drops of water are, are being placed. Well, transforming education sounds like you're transforming the world and your drops of water are a mighty ocean. That's what I'm observing from here. Thank you. I have to tell you, it's such a joy to talk to you. You've got such wonderful energy. I feel the turn up here. I feel it here. That's what's up. That's <laughs> so what's up. Thank you so much for coming to the no, South by Southwest EDU studio. I am thankful to have been invited to be at the studio. Uh, EDU is like family. And I haven't been for a couple of years, and so I'm just really glad to be back. Well, welcome home. Thank you very much. And good luck on your panel. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more South by Southwest EDU studio.